Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about Factorio, or taking a look at Factorio, whatever you want to say, involving Factorio. Factorio is a game in early access that has kind of caught a certain group of people by storm over the last year or so, because it is an incredibly excellent simulation of automation and of creating your own factory on an alien planet, a pretty hostile alien planet, by the way. And what it involves is mostly bending your brain in order to make sure you get whatever you want done to be done in the most efficient and effective way possible. And that's basically it, and although that may sound simple, it's not at all. And I think that's probably the best way to actually describe the game's biggest strength. It has a... Uh, oh, hey, research. It has a simplistic premise taken to really a significantly uh, complex height of gameplay that's pretty much player-driven in how complex it can go. This is a game where you make your own problem that you will then solve in your own way. And if you like that sort of thing, then this will give you hundreds of hours of playtime in its current state. Even though it's in early access, it has a lot going for it already. So what is this that you're looking at right now? Well, this is my puny little factory. I've put about uh, 21 hours in the game in order to feel that I'm capable of actually talking about it, because I'm not nearly as good at this game as most of the people that you'll already see on YouTube actually talking about it. But I feel that after this period of time, I am actually capable of speaking of it in some sort of capacity. And this save has about 15 hours in it to create this factory that you're seeing now. So I guess what I should really do is take you around and show you what it involves. You'll start with basic stuff like this. This is a, a patch of coal on the ground here. And uh, coal will drive most of your early production because you gotta, you gotta power stuff. You gotta use it for making power and use it for actually processing the other resources into things that you can make better things out of, to put it simply. You will use it to uh, you power furnaces, effectively. And those furnaces will smelt, whee, those furnaces will smelt metal into other products that you can then use in crafting recipes. So here I have a little, a basic little setup of a couple of electric mining drills here that are, just to show you how the automation works in a very simple way, these are two mining drills that are dumping the coal into this chest in the middle. These inserters are basically just fast robotic arms. And they are, whenever there is an empty space, taking the coal out of the chest and putting it on this conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is traversing this coal all the way up here, and it is being processed onto various, excuse me, various lines for various purposes. And these two machines are feeding many, many different things. So let me take you on the grand tour here. This coal is being pushed up here, and this is a splitter, which turns one conveyor belt into two, and there'll be many splitters along the way. And some of this coal is going over here, where it is being automatically fed into furnaces. There are three different furnaces over here that the coal is being used for. And uh, this keeps it to where I don't have to keep walking over here and putting the coal into the furnaces to make sure that they keep working. This ensures that they are always doing their job. And this obviously is a patch of copper up here. So this is basically the same setup as the coal, only with the extra step of the copper ore that's being mined being uh, transferred down into furnaces to be made into copper bars, as you can see here. Well, copper plates, rather. And in order to do that, they have to go through furnaces, and these furnaces have to be powered by something. In this case, it's coal. So that's what all this is doing. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple setup, not that complicated. The coal then goes up here and is being split off right here to power these. These are boilers. Water is being drawn from this rather large uh, lake over here, sort of big natural reservoir that I decided to set up my base next to because I happened to find a place where there is stone, coal, copper, and even uranium next to this big reservoir of water. So that seems like the perfect place to set up a base because that's like all the resources I need all close together. And this base 
uh, this water is being drawn up into a boiler, which needs coal to run. So the coal is being drawn into these chests, that way there's always a surplus in case something happens on the coal line, because it's extra important that these boilers have a large supply of coal to run off of, because if these boilers go down, that means the supply of steam to these steam engines goes down, and if the steam engines go down, then all of the electricity being supplied to every other machine connected by these power poles go down, which means they stop working. So these chests that I put here are an extra kind of insurance policy against the coal running out, because even if this whole line of surplus coal runs dry, there is still 1.6 thousand coal surplus in this chest here to keep the boiler running, which should give me plenty of time to fix whatever the problem is down here to uh, get the coal flowing again. So if you follow this line all the way up here, you will see again a couple of more splitters where the same thing is happening where there are more boilers and six more steam engines because this particular line up here, this uh, power system, is powering a lot more than the one down there so there are more boilers and more steam engines because, well, one boiler can support two steam engines. Down here you also see a, a stone quarry that I had going. I don't currently need the stone being actively mined, although I'll probably restart it soon because I um, need to make some more concrete, and stone is an important part of that. I had just a simple thing going here where there was an electric miner putting stone into this, and then arms taking the stone and putting it in the furnaces. And I can of course draw some coal off of this if I want to and put it into these, so I can have an automated uh, stone brick maker and then have some arms putting some the bricks in the chests, and you know, you can automate this very easily. Down here we got something a bit more complicated. I have, I'll show you this a bit later, but I have a, an oil line going from way out here in the desert up here. And the oil is being stored in here, the storage tank, a bunch of crude. Crude is being pumped into this refinery, which is making it into three different products. Heavy and light oil, as well as petroleum gas. And then I have this set up here, which isn't currently doing anything right now, because I just stopped making a bunch of stuff with it in order to film this. And uh, it was uh, going into these chemical plants to make a variety of things. You can basically click on these chemical plants and have them make whatever you have recipes for. So they can make things like sulfuric acid, which I can use for batteries, uh, actual sulfur, plastic, or solid fuel, which is sort of like coal, and that you can run things that would use, that need to burn stuff like coal, but it has a lot more fuel density, so it lasts a lot longer than coal does. And also lubricant, which is used for making a lot of engine-related stuff. And I can also make flamethrower ammo out of these, which is very important because flamethrowers are awesome. And these are assembling machines, which I'll get into in a minute. You also see I've got quite a perimeter wall set up because you do get attacked, and I've got some turrets here with some ammo in them. I've also got this other coal mining operation set up here, which is going all the way up to this. We'll get to that in a minute, don't worry. And all this, holy crap. So this is my kind of pride and joy system set up up here, which took me a while. This is the big iron patch I've got. So iron is something you'll need a lot of throughout most of the game. You will need iron for just about everything. So this is a kind of assembly line-like system I've got going on with a bunch of iron mining and uh, being made into iron uh, plates like this. Also, some of this iron is being sent off to be made into various products on this automated assembly line here, which I'll get to in a sec. You can see the coal coming up here. I have various underground belts. Uh, you can make underground versions of the belts and pipes to help save space, because of course if I had all of this going above ground, then I would have no room to build anything else up here and it would be very messy. But underground stuff can only go a certain distance at a time before you have to put it back above ground and kind of weave it up and down. I also have some of the iron being made into steel. As well as uh, this, simply mining iron ore, because iron ore is an ingredient that's used in um, uh, concrete. So I planned ahead and set this here just so I'd have a big surplus of stuff to use when I wanted to make a bunch of concrete, because I knew that was coming eventually. I've also got some solar panels here set up to help take some of the load off of the power grid during the day, 
And what I plan on doing eventually is expanding, you see this bit of concrete up here that I have nothing else on? I want to expand this concrete up to here and maybe expand this wall out and make a big solar farm. Because I just researched uh, these. These are accumulators. They're basically like giant uh, batteries. And I guess that would be called a capacitor. And the accumulators store energy that can be used for later. And this would be how a real life solar panel would work, you know, because of course solar panels, you know, they don't work at night very well. So what you would basically do is create a solar farm and put some accumulators there that can store the energy that they actually make during the day. And then at night when the load is higher, because those panels aren't uh, contributing and because at night the load is higher anyway f because lights turn on and things like that that those accumulators can drain be drained of the accumulated energy of the day so that's the plan i'm going to eventually expand and make one of those big solar farm because as you can see these solar panels don't take up that much space although you need a lot of them to make a significant amount of energy i also have some stuff i still need to clean up a couple of surplus chests from when things were moved differently things used to be in a bit of a different order but I just recently rejigged the whole production line and made it look a bit nicer. Like I said, this is only about 15 hours of work, which in the uh, Spain of Factorio timescale isn't very long. And uh, it's kind of a puny factory, really. People will make fun of it. Go ahead and make fun of it in the comments if you want to. I know it's not all that impressive, and people can make significantly more impressive things, but this is what I've managed right now. And, yeah, so... Down here, I should explain this. You can craft whatever you can make from your inventory here. So if I wanted to, for instance, make some ammo, I could just do this and it'll craft down here. It tells you what it takes. And you have quite a space of inventory here. And uh, some stuff you can see I can't make because it requires various things that I don't have. And for instance, I actually would like to make another battery. And some things can only be made in certain crafting stations or buildings like flamethrower ammo as I showed you earlier can only be made in those chemical plants because it requires liquid ingredients that have to be pumped through it and certain things can only be made in these assembling machines as well and there's a lot of stuff that requires liquid stuff now with the oil processing but after you craft things you will find that sometimes just doing it yourself isn't enough and you need to automate things and that's where this whole, should I do it myself or should I have something set up to automate it comes in. Because research requires science juice. This red stuff and this uh, green stuff here is science juice. And these are labs, how you do your research. This research tree that's about to pop up. Again, this research tree here. As you can see, this is how you unlock everything in the game to actually craft more and better stuff. There's a lot of it as well. And if you want to actually do research in any kind of good speed then you need to have this process automated because crafting the science juice here takes forever. So that's what all of these are doing. These are buildings that can craft just like you can. But they craft at a slightly slower speed until you get to the assembling machine 3, which is a building that I haven't yet unlocked. And those can also craft uh, things with up to six ingredients, I believe, which is pretty impressive. And that allows for some really ridiculous recipes, by the way, and some really huge, like, very complex setups that I'm just not even capable of fathoming right now. But what this is doing is crafting me... Basically, these both of these lines are taking raw materials from all of this up here and making two lines of red and green science for research purposes. So that I know that all I have to do is select a research and these machines will make the science for me, and these arms will pick it up and put it into the labs to actually get it going as needed. It's not working completely uh, perfectly right now, because I don't have every part of it as automated as I could. For instance, I could have like an underground belt system delivering uh, copper to that, and to that. But, it still works pretty well, 
And now I'm at the point where I actually need to automate the production of these, these Science Pack 3s, because they take forever to make, like 45 seconds each, and things need like hundreds of them. And some of the stuff, like the fact that they need engine units, for example, these, these need assembling machines to make. You can't really make those yourself. You have to have a machine make those for you. So they also require advanced circuits and electric mining drills. So if you go here, advanced circuits requires electronic circuits, plastic bars, copper cables. Each of those also have their own recipes. And it also may take an electric mining drill, which takes more circuits, iron gears, and iron plates. So basically what that's saying is you need like a bunch of these buildings, each drawing a lot of iron and copper from various sources and each crafting those things to eventually join them together in buildings that will craft the larger components of that that will then put them together in another building to create a science pack that will then put it on a conveyor and spit it out here so that it can be automated instead of me making them all myself. And that's kind of where the game shines. You can do this yourself, and I've done it myself up to this point. I've made about 350 of those Science Pack 3s on my own, but it's so painfully slow that it's gotten to the point where, since, as you saw in the research tree here, just about everything, all of these researches, I mean, that one needs 400, 50, 50, 75, they need so many that I, I can't just sit around and do nothing and craft these myself, because as you saw, in the crafting queue there, when you're crafting something, you can't craft anything else until that thing is done. And since those take so long, if anything happens, or if I want to change stuff around on my base, or if I want to craft more drills to expand my operation, I have to wait until I'm done crafting those science packs. So I really need to be automating the production of that blue science juice. So I need to rack my brain and figure out how to get an efficient... That's what all this empty space right here is for, by the way. An efficient production line of a bunch of assembling machine twos going to start crafting some science juice, blue science juice, and have it automated so I just know that it can happen for me on a reliable basis. And that's basically the gist of the game. You, uh, you create your problem by saying, what do I need? And then you say, how do I do it? And then you do it. And if that seems like an interesting concept to you, then Factorio, really, you need to check it out. Because I've never seen a game that does it as good, as well, I should say, as this game does. Although you will be frustrated at times, possibly, by your inability to actually get things done in the way that you'd hoped until you figure out something, if you're like me. You know, when I was younger, back in like 2004, 2007-ish, I played Gary's Mod all the time, and I love to create weird stuff using wire mod and uh, like an eight-cylinder engine one time with the help of an actual uh, NASA engineer, believe it or not, in multiplayer. That was fun. And this takes me back to those days when my brain worked better and I could actually make things like that. And uh, if you're like me and you want to be kind of put in that place again, then... Factorio is really something pretty special, actually. I should also show you this. There are vehicles and some really cool stuff in the game. So there are things like modular and powered armor. I've got uh, a battery and some per uh, portable personal solar panels, for instance, so that the panels can actually generate power, the battery can store it during the day, and I have an exoskeleton equipped that actually drains power to make me run faster, which is useful in combat. And I have a car that I made as well. The car can store stuff in the trunk, I have it running off of solid fuel that I made, which seems healthy. And it also has a mounted weapon, this is what I made these for. You can just hop on in the car and drive around. So I should show you a little bit of the combat and the exploration stuff as well, so let's just head out of the base here. I should also mention that the the art style of this game, this. Don't hit rocks. The art style of this game reminds me very much of old Command & Conquer titles. It gives me kind of nostalgia of uh, Red Alert. A lot of Red Alert in here, and a bit of like Tiberian Sun as well. And StarCraft. A lot of StarCraft, and you'll see why in a minute. But, check this out. So, 
this is the map, you may notice, and it shows you your base. You can do things like uh, see your power networks, which looks cool, or see your turret coverage. As you can tell, I get attacked from the top a lot. We're going to try and solve that problem. And you can also see the various resource patches. I have a radar, as you probably saw earlier in my base, scanning around, which is why a lot of this is revealed. And uh, all of these red spots are enemy bases. And there are lots of enemies in this game, and the enemies will evolve depending on a couple of things. Depending on uh, how much pollution you produce, they'll attack you more, and they will evolve into bigger and nastier forms over time, like just depending on how long you play, as well as, oh my goodness, as well as uh, depending on how many of their spawners and like bases you've destroyed. So, you will get attacked from time to time in your base, which is why you need various defenses, like turrets, flamethrower turrets, laser turrets, and things like that, walls. You have like automated combat robotics you can get, and occasionally you need to push out and attack them. And this is why I said it reminds me of StarCraft a bit, because these guys in their bases really remind me of like Brood War era Zerg and their look. So I've got some nasty surprises for them. Okay, they've got some biters, some medium biters, and a couple of nastier things. So I'm gonna park right here, repair my car. I've got a shotgun that I can use. You can make a lot of weapons and armors. There's a like powered armor as well that I don't have access to yet, as well as uh, energy consuming shields, like actual energy shields that go over your health gauge, which is really cool. You can go up to things like rocket launchers, uh, you can actually get tanks with normal and explosive ammunition. You can even get nuclear bombs, which I don't know how this works. I'm wondering if that will actually, like, if it will ruin the area that you launch them in. Temporarily or something like that. I'm genuinely curious as to how the nuclear bombs work. But you have to research, like, concrete and uranium and enrichment and stuff like that to actually get to nuclear bombs. But one of the other things you can get that I do have is the flamethrower. Oh, yes. And it's very satisfying. It's also nice to have all of this uh, extra stuff like the exoskeleton. Okay, there's a lot of those to give me extra running speed when in combat. Your health does regenerate, but it takes a minute. A minute out of combat and it will begin to re Whoa! regenerate again. What is this? Rail signals. Oh, interesting. You can also build uh, railway networks, by the way, so that if you have multiple bases or like a small outpost far away from your base that's doing like a mining outpost of important resources, you can transport things more quickly to a main base using a, a train, which is very cool. I'm going to get a fluid wagon so I can actually transport oil from far away and other fluids. Maybe I can uh, get like some sulfuric acid and stuff in production closer to the oil wells and then transport it to my base via rail because there's actually a large crude oil stuff going on up here that I could actually use that for. So yeah, that is Factorio in a nutshell. It is genuinely impressive and there's a lot to do. This is free play. Uh, there is a sort of campaign that acts as a tutorial, but as of right now, it's somewhat incomplete. Uh, it will still last you several hours if you want to actually try it, but it's not like the main gameplay Oh boy. It's not the main gameplay mode. Free play is the main gameplay mode of Factorio and where the game actually shines. And it is how I would recommend you play it, although doing at least the first like three or so levels of the tutorial campaign may be a good idea. And uh, if you want to try it out, it is $20, and there is a demo available as well on Steam. And when I say $20, I do mean it is literally $20. It's not $19.99, it is $20 exactly, which is interesting. I've never actually seen a game priced that way before. But yeah, it's genuinely impressive. I love the art style. I love how much it uh, gives you the freedom to choose what you want to do and how you want to go about it, and just lets you figure it out yourself, and lets you do with the resources you're given what you will, and just kind of make your own way through. If you want to do something in a kind of not all that efficient, but still workable way, you can do that. 
but if you want to rack your brain to figure out the most efficient possible way to automate everything, you can do that too. And I think a lot of people will get a lot of enjoyment out of this. Oh, and by the way, it has mods. It already has a very healthy modding scene that is officially supported in-game with an in-game mod browser and a very good mod installation system. The forums have a great mod list, and it includes things like making the research tree even more complicated and adding a huge amount of like new ores and complication to the game if you want that and are crazy. Which is awesome. I think that amount of extra options available this early can only really be a good thing. Oh my god. So yeah, check it out. I'll link you in the description below this video. And, uh, oh no, that is... F Ooh, don't burn myself alive. That is Factorio. I'm gonna try and destroy this base, and then go back home and figure out how to automate some Science Pack 3 production. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.